Today, we're gonna to be running through one of the biggest quarterly application updates that I've seen come out of Zoho in quite a long while. It is for Zoho Desk, and just to lead you off, a couple of the big ones here are centered around Zia LLM usage for writing email responses to tickets, creating knowledge base articles, and more. So let's jump right on in. As you can see here, if you check my scroll bar on the far right, this is quite a long article. We're gonna go through a lot of the front end of it in a lot of detail. And then the back end we'll kind of cover more briefly. Really, these all center around some Zia updates. This kind of undersells how big these are. Self-service around help center and knowledge base, additional customization, agent productivity, talking about your team being the agents, not like an AI agent, data administration, more integrations, messaging, and more. To lead us off, again, the big ones here are some of these Zia agents that are going to be rolling out to Zoho Desk. Those who've been following the Zoho AI rollout you've probably started to notice that, yes, they are working on things like Agent Studio, which are going to give you the full ability to create your own agents that can handle a variety of different tasks. That's still in early access, kind of slowly rolling out to more people. But Zoho is also using their own tool to create some pre-built agents for you that you can essentially just turn on inside of your account. This one's covering two of the new ones here that are going to be available on request for Zoho Desk. So, they break down in these two. You've got a support specialist. This is somebody who essentially can respond to tickets, read your customer intent, understand what they're looking to do. And then you have a resolution expert, which essentially takes a ticket that's been completed, writes up and logs the resolution for it. So that ideally in a future state, when a new ticket comes in, you can kind of match that against solutions that you already have. Here we can see essentially the support specialist. This exists as someone who you can basically like assign a ticket to. And then what it will do is draft up and write those responses that can be sent out directly to the client based on whatever type of ticket that came in. One thing that is important to note here is this should almost be in bold. This is very much knowledge base driven, right? So this is an LLM tool, but it's really gonna be focused in on the types of things that you have stored in your knowledge base. Now, that does mean it requires a bit of work on your side to make sure that the knowledge base is well populated. But the upside is that it's not going to like invent a refund policy and share it with a client, right? Because if it's just pulling from the internet at large, it's going to find something and it's going to give it out. So you don't really want it to do that. So it is going to be constrained to that knowledge base. If it cannot find a good answer from that knowledge base, it's going to assign the ticket to a human, right? So it's going to go, hey, they're asking about refunds. I see nothing in our knowledge base that tells me what that policy is. So I'm going to need to punt this back to somebody who can do that. But let's say you got a ticket that came in called how to reset my password, right? Well, that's probably in the knowledge base and it can just auto reply to that for you and eliminate the, the human being from having to do that kind of repetitive, easy stuff that is well serviced by the knowledge base. Now, after those tickets get resolved, you can now use the resolution expert to essentially write up the solution to that ticket and save it for later. Now, one of the things I've noticed in Zoho Desk, and we talked about this a little bit on the podcast, is that for ticket resolutions, they're very useful. They can be added to your internal knowledge base. They don't have to be shared externally, but that internal knowledge base can also then start to help the support specialist, right? So these become a bit of a virtuous cycle where a human answers a ticket, that answer might not be a knowledge base, resolution expert can help write up that resolution and submit it, and then for a future ticket, that support specialist can now see and use that as part of its knowledge base for answering a future request that looks a lot like that first one. Now, the one thing with resolutions is they're very useful, but I'll tell you, most of the people that we see who are using Desk do not religiously write up and log ticket resolutions, right? It's like, hey, ticket's done, I'm closing it out, I'm moving on to the next thing. So the ability to essentially flag this resolution expert to come in and do this makes it so that one, you don't have to, and two, it actually gets done. 
right? Because in a lot of organizations, these are just not done consistently, despite the fact that they are quite useful down the line as you want to use that knowledge base to accomplish other things. There is even more here centered around AI, but before I get into that, I do want to ask if you're finding the video useful so far, be sure to like and subscribe down below. Leave me a comment with which one of these updates is most valuable for you, or if there's anything that you think is still missing inside a Zoho desk. And if you need any help on your Zoho installation, just head on over to Zanata.com and click on book a meeting. We'd love to chat. On with the article. So next one here is converting your ticket conversations into knowledge base articles. So again, thinking about that virtuous cycle, you process all these tickets, right? But how often are we actually taking one of those that was new or about a topic we hadn't touched before or about something that wasn't documented, right? And then writing up an article about it right? Because now you have that ticket, you have all your communication back and forth. Ideally, you have that resolution. So an AI bot can take that and write up an article to it. Now, I would recommend using this to write it as a draft. And then you go in there, make sure it looks good and then publish it, right? So the AI is going to basically be a draft creator here. And then you are going to refine and publish. But again, sure, it's not doing 100%. But if it's getting it like 90% correct, and then I just need to come in there, make a small adjustment, and then post it to the knowledge base, it's going to save me a huge amount of time. And then in the future, this support specialist is going to be able to refer to that article that I just made to answer a future ticket. With these tools, what I recommend is if you are kind of interested in using agents to help with the support process, you really need to commit to resolutions and knowledge base maybe more than you have in the past, right? Because users can chat with users. They can kind of learn things as they go. They can, you know, intuit things. The AI kind of can't. It's really just going to look at the content that it is allowed to pull from, and it's going to use that to write up these responses. So if you've been a bit lazy, you're kind of lagging on adding things to knowledge base, this is your call to action, right? Start doing it because it's going to allow you to save a huge amount of time. Next one here is accuracy with Quen. So this is actually the first time I've seen them use the name Quen for their AI tool. What this is doing is essentially improving accuracy in the content generation and ticket summaries. So rather than just using the like baseline Zia or like the first gen of Zia LLM, this is kind of like a new model that they're rolling out. If you do remember from the AI studio and agent studio news that we covered a little while back, They kind of have different tiers of models that they're using for different types of scenarios. In some cases, you actually might benefit from a tightly trained model that's more specific, whereas others, you might want like a massive data set. Quen is a pretty large data set, 32 billion parameters. And this is the one that you can choose to use inside of Desk, either this or Llama 3.1. I would go with Quen probably. Llama 3.1, if I recall, is a little bit older, probably a little less robust. Next one too, it's not just agents. You also have the ability to tie in these AI actions uh, via workflows. Workflows, of course, being our kind of workhorse if-then statement builder. Zia Workflows can set up an auto-reply email, right? Basically saying, hey, we're going to follow up in person, but here's the first draft that we can get you immediately to get back an answer. Really cool. Again, because we have to think about in the types of tickets that we get, we might have even, let's say, 50% of them are pretty consistent repeat types of tickets that we see from a lot of clients. That auto email reply using Zia is probably going to get a lot of those right and just completely eliminate a ticket interaction that you would have to make. Like imagine you could just take, I mean, shoot, let's go lower. Imagine you could take 25% of your tickets and they just automatically get resolved, right? You never have to think about it. That's pretty darn good. And then 25 becomes 30 and 30 becomes 40, 40 becomes 50, right? So you start using these, you start baking in more information to your knowledge base, and then their ability to auto respond to these can get better and better. Now, what this is also doing is basically giving a quick summary, and then it's going to link them to things in the knowledge base. Next one up is generate content inside of Zia. So you can essentially summarize what the customer needs and then write up a first draft or some type of summarization of that ticket, right? So it will create a contextual summary, easy to consume text to help the agent take whatever action they need to do. This is going to be auto-populated into comments, right? So either private or public comments. Really, the idea here is like, and the way I would start to look at this is like a ticket comes in. If it can auto-reply, great, auto-reply. If it can't, go ahead and generate some type of summary for me that gives me a suggestion of what I might do about it, 
right? So you kind of be able to tier these things out and work with them to try to automate as much as humanly possible. Field prediction. So what this is doing is essentially taking a look at the ticket and what's come in and then trying to see if it can assign certain field parameters based on the types of things that you're seeing in that ticket, right? So in this case, it's predicting subject. Realistically, I would probably more have it predict something like category, type, skills required, right? Things like that. Field extraction. This is really cool. So what this is doing is almost like an email parser. You know, you set up an email parser, it hits an inbox. We look for specific sections inside of that ticket. And then we pull them out using scripts or, or parsing the logic. What you'll know about parsers is that they're funky, right? And they miss things, they make errors. What this is doing, is essentially saying, hey, LLM tool, here are five fields. I want you to read the ticket content and see if there's something in there that you could use to intelligently assign these field values, right? So if a student were to write in, they're like, hey, my student ID is CSC 402015, boom. It's going to grab that, put it into that field. But a different student, they might write that at the end, right? And that's where your traditional parser has a problem because it kind of needs things to come in the same way every time, right? If you have an email that's like sent by a software tool where it's like name, email, phone, kind of form structure, a parser is probably going to work fine most of the time. Something like a, an email written by a human, a parser is almost never going to work because there's just too much variability that the parsing logic is not going to be able to handle. So having an LLM tool actually read that, knowing what it's looking for, and then processing it into those fields, I think is a really good approach. And honestly, I think email parsers are going to be dead in a couple of years because this is like such a better way to try to accomplish that goal that I just think it's, they're kind of doomed <laughs> in, in my opinion. We're going to rapid fire around the rest of these. A lot of this mobile section is basically things you could do on browsers that you can now also do on mobile. So ticket and thread summarization, the generation of content, reply assistance, right? So having it like pre-write the replies, modifying tone, right? All these came out maybe two months ago for the browser tool and are all now supported on iOS and Android. So if you are answering tickets on the go, you can now use all those tools that you've gotten used to using on your browser. More self-center or self-service help inside of the help center and knowledge base. So what this does, basically we're taking in a help center approach, but we're extending it to internal stakeholders and employees. What you've traditionally had is like, if, if you think about the way that desk works, is if you're a customer, you submit a ticket via email, you can log into the help center, see all your tickets, you can see all those knowledge base articles. If you're an agent, then if you go to the help center or the knowledge base inside the application, you're actually going to like the backend management of that knowledge base. And yes, all the articles are in there, but you might not even really want to give all of your team permission to go into the back end of the knowledge base. So what this is doing, basically saying, hey, for those employees who are logged into Zoho Desk, let's give them a version of that knowledge base that they can use as a user, not as an admin, that they can search and learn and, and access that same type of content. We also now have the ability to run trainings for the team. Really cool. Essentially, this is tying in like Trainer Central, which is their you know learning management platform that you can charge for and, and build these structured courses. So you can now integrate that directly into Desk so that employees can go through these types of training programs. I think that's really cool. Content analysis. So this is inside of your knowledge base, looking for typos, logical errors, grammar issues. I, I will say our experience using the like Zoho, what do they call it? Blue pencil, things like that. I don't love the way that it looks at like grammar and sentence structure. I don't know that it quite gets it right, but things like typos, readability scores are probably still going to be pretty useful. Article templates that you can save and reuse for the knowledge base. I love that. Moderation on public comments. This has always been a tricky thing that like somebody can kind of just come in and comment on stuff, right? And you don't really always want every comment to show up. So now you can moderate those, right? You can even require that they go through some type of approval. So like a totally reasonable comment gets approved. Somebody who's just like, saying crazy stuff on your help center gets denied. More updates as well for customization. So help center UI can now be adjusted using JavaScript. Really cool. So you can add animations, do visuals, responsive design, third-party tools like analytics, feedback forms, things that aren't just the help center content. This is really cool. 
honestly, I think for nine out of 10 people, the baseline help center is going to be more than good enough. But for that 10% that really wants to do something crazy in there, being able to use JavaScript opens up a lot of functionality for you. Multilingual support for image and audio, profile permissions to allow people to manage custom views. Again, really nice. You might want to turn this off for some people that shouldn't be in there tinkering around. But those who can, you can now give them more specific controls. More accessibility settings in the Help Center. This is great. The Help Center, at a core level, is designed to save you time, right? You want a user to be able to go in and find what they need and then read it easily so that you don't have to get a ticket, right? It's a win-win. If you have some type of accessibility challenge or if your client does, they might struggle to do that. And then it results in you getting a ticket to answer something that otherwise was answered on the knowledge base. So again, the more accessibility settings, the better. It looks like these are selectable by the user. So it's not like you have to set this. They will just be available and the user can choose which ones they like to use. Again, accessibility settings, always good. If you make the help center easier to use, they're more likely to use it and then they're less likely to submit a ticket. So why not? Users can now export their own tickets from the help center, really like that. So if they needed to like do some type of audit on the support services you're providing, you can give them that option. You can now manage additional agents per admin. Essentially, you can now add 10 at a time, so why not? User specific list views by saving filters. This is really similar to CRM. You know, you've got like your custom views, which are like managed by an admin and then deployed to the team. And then you have those like quick filters, right? The little ones over on the left. You can now do that thing where a user could make their own little filter and save it, right? So, hey, I know you give me the My Open Tickets custom view, but I like three little quick filters for priority just so I can make sure I'm up to date on my high priority tickets. You can now go, yeah, awesome, man. Set those up. You're good to go. Lastly, agents can now be assigned tickets the minute that a previous one gets closed from the backlog. Basically, in some scenarios, you might want to set your system up so that an agent basically has one ticket to work on until it's done, then the next one comes in. So what this is basically saying is, hey, now we have this feature where when a ticket gets closed, we'll immediately bring one in from the backlog for that agent. And now that's their next one ticket that they need to work on. Lots of different productivity updates here. So sending messages via WhatsApp, mass messages via WhatsApp, workflow notifications via Click, Slack, Teams, Google Chat. We love that. I'm always happy to be able to notify my team via Click rather than via an email. And then a ton of mobile updates, multilingual templates, user profile, etc. New data import tools, new UI for exporting. I mean, they have been very, very busy. The rest of these updates are really administrative, right? Lots of minor little tweaks and adjustments for the system. Better audit logging and updates is really nice. Like I love to be able to see like all of the updates that occurred for a particular record. And then of course, a bunch of new integrations, Power BI, GitLab, new webhook functionality for instant messaging. So you can get these like chat accepted, chat ended. I mean, again, they have been very, very, very busy. Um, if you are a Zoho Desk admin, I recommend reading through the rest of that article in detail because there's going to be stuff on there that's valuable for you. But I think at that core level, a lot of this stuff being centered around the new Zia LLM features around the agents, the content creation, the knowledge base management. I think you're going to find a ton of value in this. The big takeaway message that I really want to highlight is like start working on that knowledge base because like for a lot of people, that kind of pinnacle functionality where, like, where they would love to go is that an AI tool could do a good job at answering 20, 30% of tickets, right? And then we can slowly build it up from there as we get better and better and the tools get better and better. And you're only going to get there if you've got that knowledge base. So like what I would recommend is start by turning on resolution expert, right? Have them start writing resolutions. Those resolutions that are good use the AI tool to then create knowledge base articles that get proofed by a human, make sure they're accurate. You know, Again, I just think about things like a refund policy, like you need a human manager to look at that and go, yes, that is our refund policy. As soon as humanly possible, I would say start getting the resolutions in and start getting knowledge base articles in because then you can start to test out that support specialist and really see once you've hit critical mass where it can start answering a decent amount of tickets for you. I really do hope that this video is useful for you. A lot of times I see an article like this and I see all this stuff that I just think is super useful and valuable. And then I see that not a lot of people have seen it over here on the forums. And I just like to share it with you guys. 
So let me know down below in the comments which ones of these features you're most excited about, which ones are still missing that you're eager to see get added to Zoho. And while you're down there, make sure to like and subscribe. That's a totally free way to help out the channel and let us know that you appreciate the content. And last but not least, head on over to Zanata.com and click on book a meeting if you'd like to talk about how we can help you set up features like this and more inside of Zoho. As always, my name is Tyler Colt and I will see you next time.